powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Janelle Slade. And I'm Jay Cohn in for Russ this evening. We have breaking news to bring you at this hour. A head on collision has forced the closure of North 27th Street at Rimrock Road. Our reporter on scene says extrication was underway at a time and at, at the time and at least two people have been transported to the hospital. Now this call came in shortly before 930 tonight. We'll of course have the latest for you at KTVQ.com as details become available. Also, please try to stay away from this area area at Rimrock and North 27th. Elsewhere, an early morning shooting inside a Great Falls casino has left three people dead and a fourth victim with a gunshot wound to his face. The suspect shot and killed by police nearly four hours later, right next to an elementary school. But as police searched for the suspect, that suspect sought a place to hide, even trying to break into someone's home. It was extremely loud and violent. It wasn't a, a polite knock like somebody was here to, to visit. And so uh, I got up to see what was going on and I started checking the rest of my house to make sure that nobody was in my house and I could hear police sirens throughout the neighborhood going off. I told my wife to call 911 that whoever they were looking for was trying to get into our house. Now the suspect located by police 10 blocks about two miles away from the crime scene. Law enforcement say the man was armed and that shots were fired in the events that led to his death. Now the suspect's name as well as those of the victims have not yet been released. Authorities also say at this point they do not know of a possible motive. Across the country, educators from countries like the Philippines are arriving on the doorsteps of rural school districts to help fill staffing shortages. And Montana is no exception to welcoming these temporary teachers. MTN Investigates' Keely Van Middendorp tonight shows us more. That's right. There doesn't seem to be any data on just how many foreign nationals are teaching in schools around the state. Now, MTN investigates checked several times with the Office of Public Instruction, who said that their licensure department is not capable of tracking that data. While there seems to be no concrete numbers on the local level, the U.S. Department of State lists just five foreign nationals who taught in Montana last year. Now compare that to the roughly 30 Filipino teachers teaching in districts this year here in the state. That estimate given to MTN by officials with Montana's largest union. Now, while some think what looks like an influx of foreign educators is a good thing, others aren't so sure. I dug deeper into the issue. There are some people here who actually gave me transportation money just to go back in the Philippines to see my wife when, when she was alive. Meet Benedicto Pastrana, or Mr. Ben, as he's been referred to over the past four years by the community he's come to call home. Uh, what I felt is I lost my wife, but I have another family here in Shelby. But that district isn't alone in seeing new faces move into their communities to fill teaching vacancies. Have a good day, Father. Thank you, you too. Love you, Love you too. Both Shelby and Rocky Boy districts have made the list for critical educator shortages over the years. Hard to find teachers, not only we're a reservation community, a Native American school, but we're rural, we're isolated. District officials say these Filipino teachers have brought a flood of relief to hiring droughts depleting rural communities of local teachers and educators like Mr. Ben now consider the High Line their second home. They're lovable and Something like you can be fond of them, working with them. But not everyone is feeling the love. It seemed combative. An email sent in 2017 highlighted concerns from the state union's top official after a Filipino teacher opted out of paying dues to support her family still living overseas. You know, it wasn't just, oh, I'm sorry to hear that you're leaving. You know, it was more of, you have Filipino teachers? How many? Why do we have them? You know, are they licensed? MTN Investigates found all four Filipino teachers did have their proper licenses and certifications to teach in the district that year. We then followed up with MFPE President Eric Fever, who said the union fights for teacher benefits across the board. And I was very sorry to see them go because we're representing them regardless of the fact they're from the Philippines. He'd like to see this as a pathway to citizenship as it stands now, but says the J-1 program only hurts recruitment and retention efforts, which hinge directly on the union's fight for better teacher pay and benefits. That's a very different thing than to talk about a temporary workforce from someplace else that will work for a different wage scale than maybe the folks that we want to keep there forever. Shelby officials say they would love to hire teachers who stay for decades, but that's not the reality. They're Facing right now. The fact of the matter is, I hire a lot of Montana teachers and they work for two or three years for me and then they leave. 
Fever says it's up to the state to provide more resources to recruit and retain local educators. It costs to employ teachers in Sunburst. Turner has three Filipino teachers. There are 10 teachers in, Philip in Turner. Or in some cases, the districts themselves to figure out a better way. Maybe Turner just needs to figure out how to pay teachers better. We are doing everything that we can with the limitations placed upon us to provide the best possible education for, for our students that we can. And this would become very good. When it comes to all Montana students, Fever says a push for diversity from within state borders is needed over help from outside the U.S. We need more Native American faces in front of students in our classrooms. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not doing that with Filipinos. We're not doing it with folks who look like me either. Rocky Boy is also hoping to employ more Native American educators after a new program down the road aims to graduate more teachers from tribal backgrounds. Uh, they'll have six graduates this summer, so we've actually got an open pipeline now. In the meantime, the district has found at least one long-term solution. So I am now a very happy green card holder. I love my new family here, like I love my children, I, my children, my students, I love our staff, and I feel that, you know, they love me back too. Well, teachers like Mr. Ben cherish the time left in Shelby before heading back home. Uh, it's a mixed emotions, something like uh, I'm sad because uh, I'll be leaving this kind of uh, community, but I'm also excited because uh, my country is maybe waiting for me. Now, MTN Investigates reached out to several of these companies recruiting these educators. One of them, Foreign Culture Exchange Consultant, says that they've placed 10 Filipino teachers here in Montana in just the past five years. We're now working on following up with these recruiting companies to see why these teachers incur tens of thousands of dollars in debt and how much money is being made off rural education. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Keely. Elsewhere in news tonight, the Billings Chamber of Commerce finds itself in full damage control over its Forge Your Own Path advertising campaign. That's the campaign that has graced local billboards, the Chamber's website, and visitor guides for the past year and a half. The campaign has drawn the ire of local blogger Alexis Bonagovsky, who has raised concerns over its insensitivity toward Native Americans, specifically for its use of language associated with the taking of tribal lands in the old American West. In response, the Chamber has pulled its campaign. Visit Billings Executive Director Alex Tyson tells MTN News that Bonagovsky's well-written blog has given the Chamber a new lens it wasn't looking through before. We need to just be better than just looking at, you know, what the next, you know, strong ad campaign is for vacationers and travelers to come to Montana. Um, we just need to do a better job of making sure that we have more people around the table and that we're more inclusive and more sensitive um, and more diverse in all that we do. Bonagovsky says the language that was used by Visit Billings is the same language that was used to justify the genocide of Native Americans. Now, Tyson tells us the Chamber did have a chance to speak with Bonagovsky and express their regret over the campaign's tone. She also tells us the Chamber is moving quickly, taking those billboards down, scrubbing its website, and pulling its visitor guides that's included some elements of what's called the Onward Pioneers campaign. Tyson says she has plans to reach out to representatives from the Crow and Northern Cheyenne tribes and says she hopes to be able to work collaboratively, collaboratively with those tribes in future campaigns. Much more on this story, you can read about it right now at ktvq.com. Well, the rules for the House impeachment debate and vote are now set. The House Rules Committee tonight voted along party lines to approve six hours of debate tomorrow and with no amendments allowed. And separate votes will be held for each of the two articles of impeachment against President Trump. While those rules were set, the president penned a scathing letter to Nancy Pelosi claiming more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. Now, the Senate Majority Leader has said a trial will be the first order of business in the new year. The timing and format remain unclear. More than three dozen people gathered in Billings on the courthouse lawn downtown this afternoon to express their support for the impeachment of President Trump. That rally today organized by Move On Civic Action. It's a nonprofit advocacy program that, according to its website, has formed a pillar of resistance to the president. Similar protests took place all across the country today, including 11 other Montana cities. One of the speakers today called on Montana's congressional delegation to impeach the president. So now is the time for Congressman Jan Forte, Senator.
senators, deans, and testers, and all of Congress to stand as an independent, separate, co-equal branch of government and honor their oath of office. Two counter-protesters who support the president were also in attendance at that rally today, and they had America, Keep America Great flag with them. But we can tell you the rally did remain peaceful between both sides. Well, it's no secret that the state of Montana has endless opportunities to enjoy the great outdoors. The state's 30 million acres of public lands play an important role in the health of citizens and in the health of the state's economy. Today here in Billings, the advocacy group Business for Montana Outdoors brought together local health care and business leaders to make the case to support good policy and programs to protect Montana's wild places. Research done by Business for Montana Outdoors shows the wilderness brings in as much as $7.1 billion in consumer spending yearly. Now the discussion made the case for Congress to fully fund the Land and Water Conservation Fund. Now that federal conservation fund has been passed, but Congress has not funded the bill, meaning no money can be given to the states to fund projects. Over the last 10 years, the Land Water Conservation Fund has granted $245 million to Montana. Outdoor advocates say that money should come in full because investments in the outdoors benefit public health and the economy. We also talked a lot about how the outdoors uh, was the cursor for healthy communities, which then translates into healthy workforce. So um, really, how are we elevating that message that health is the connector and we need to continue investing in our outdoors in order to um, have a strong economy and a strong community. Over the bill's lifetime, the Land and Water Conservation Fund helped build 800 Montana projects, including fishing access sites and city parks. In fact, the city of Billings has received over $1.9 million from the fund during that time. Well, turning to Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire, it's not looking like a, a white Christmas this year, but what are the are odds on any given year, Bob? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Uh, it's just very, very close in many cases. Let me show you where we're at right now. Here's the USA current snow depth chart, and you'll notice over there in Billings in south central Montana, we technically don't have the snow anymore. So what's the definition for a white Christmas? Well, here's what the Weather Service says. Uh, one inch or more on Christmas Day, and they take that measurement at 5 a.m. in the morning. And so far, we've had 42 white and 43 non-white. But last year was also kind of a white Christmas as well because they took the measurement at 5 o'clock in the morning. We only had a trace of snow in the ground, didn't have the one inch. But by the end of the day, we had two and a half inches of snow. So we actually did have snow on Christmas Day. But technically, it doesn't count because it was not taken at 5 o'clock in the morning. And that's what's not entered into the climatology records in Washington, D.C. So anyway, it's about a 50% chance for some snow showers on Christmas Day. This year, I think we're probably more in the non-white category. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Still to come on tonight's 10 o'clock news, if you build it, they will come. That's the goal of a new sports lounge on the city's west end. We'll let you check it out coming up. And later in sports, hear who talked Haven Medjid out of quitting rodeo this summer, just in time for him to win a world title. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger, Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire, and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.